Hi students! It's another great way to learn mathematics. I am Ms. Siti Naima Andan, your teacher broadcaster for Mathematics 7. Today, I will teach you a new lesson in math. In this new normal, remember to stay at home, study, and together, let's be Makini and Matalino. Do you still remember our topic last time? Very good! We have discussed about the measures of central tendency, which are the mean, median, and the mood. To review, let's have this activity. Given the set of data, use your understanding on the measures of central tendency to find the mean of set A and set B. So we have set A, 4, 10, 12, 20, and 24. And set B, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. What is the mean of set A and set B? Perfect! The mean of set A is 14. And the mean of set B is also 14. Do you sometimes think, how does it look like to graph the data that we have collected? Say, for example, we have the given data a while ago of set A and set B. What if we graph this in a number line? In set A, we have 4, 10, 12, 20, and 24. And in set B, we have 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. The mean of set A is 14. Same goes with the set B. Now, this is how it looks like to graph data in set A and set B in a number line. Observe how they look like. In set A, the data are widely spread, while in set B, they are closer to each other. The spreadness and closeness of the given group of data can be measured using the measures of variability, which is our topic for today. Our objectives for today illustrate the measures of variability, the range, average deviation, variance, standard deviation of a statistical data, and Calculate the measures of variability of grouped and ungrouped data. Measures of variability refer to the spread of the values about the mean. Smaller dispersion of scores arising from the comparison often indicates more consistency and more reliability. Now, there are four measures of variability. First, we have the range. Second, we have the average deviation. Third, we have variance. And fourth, we have standard deviation. Let's have first the first measure of variability, which is the range. The range, or R, is the simplest measure of variability and is based on two extreme values. How do we solve for the range in an ungrouped data? The range is the difference between the highest value and the lowest value in any given set of data. By formula, we will use R is equal to H minus L, where H is the highest value and L is the lowest value. For example, find the range of the test scores 10, 2, 5, 6, 7, 4, and 3. Using the formula highest minus the lowest score, we will have 10 minus 2. 10 is the highest score in the given data and 2 is the lowest score in the given data. So we will have the range of 8. How about the range in a grouped data? To find the range of a grouped data, Get the difference between the upper class boundary of the highest interval and the lower class boundary of the lowest interval. 
For example, find the range of the grouped data shown in the table. We have the table class interval and frequency. Class interval of 30 to 34 has a frequency of 6. 25 to 29 has a frequency of 3. 20 to 24 is 9. 15 to 19 has a frequency of 7. And 10 to 14 has a frequency of 5. Now, how do we get the range? We will use the formula the upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary. In our class interval of 30 to 34, we have the upper class boundary of 34.5. And in our class interval of 10 to 14, is 9.5. So we will subtract these two to get the range. So we have 25. We are now done with the range. Now let's proceed with the second measure of variability, which is the average deviation. This is the average of the sum of the absolute difference of each measure from the mean. This gives a better approximation than the range. How do we solve the average deviation in an ungrouped data? To compute for the average deviation or AD of an ungrouped data, we use the formula AD is equals to the summation of the absolute value of x minus the mean over n, where x is the individual score, x bar is mean of the data, n is the total number of observations or total number of frequencies. The absolute value of x minus x bar is the absolute value of the deviation from the mean. Let's have an example. Find the average deviation of the following data. We have 12, 17, 13, 18, and 15. Step 1, we have to find the mean or the x bar. So we have 12 plus 17 plus 13 plus 18 plus 15 divided by 5. We have 75 over 5. And 75 divided by 5 is 15, which is our mean. Step 2. Find the absolute difference between each score and the mean. Remember in step 1 a while ago, our mean is 15. So we will subtract 15 from each given data. Our first data is 12. So we have the absolute value of 12 minus 15. The absolute value of 12 minus 15 is 3. The next data is 17. So we have... The absolute value of 17 minus 15. So we have 2. Next, the absolute value of 13 minus 15 is also 2. And then we have the absolute value of 18 minus 15. That is 3. And lastly, we have the absolute value of 15 minus 15 is equal to 0. Step 3. Find the sum of the absolute difference. This can be represented in tabular form as shown below. So we have x in the first column are the scores. We have 12, 17, 13, 18, and 15. And then on the second column, we have the mean. Remember, our mean is 15. Okay, so we will write 15 in each and then the third column, we have the absolute difference between the score and the mean. So we have 3, 2, 2, 3, 0. And then we will add all of those. So we have 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 0. That is equal to 10. We can now solve for the average deviation, which is in the step 4. Solve for the average deviation by dividing the result in step 3 by n, or the total number of frequencies. So we have the formula of average deviation. Remember that we have the total absolute difference of 10 that was in the table a while ago, and we have n is equal to 5, or the total number of data that we have. So we have 
10 over 5 or 10 divided by 5. Therefore, our average division is 2. How about the average division in a grouped data? To compute for the average division or AD of a grouped data, we use the formula AD is equal to the summation of F times the absolute value of X sub M minus X bar over N. Where X sub M is the midpoint of each class interval and x bar is the mean of the data, and n is the total number of observations. For example, find the average division of the following data. We have here the given, the class interval 30 to 34, 25 to 29, 20 to 24, 15 to 19, and 10 to 14. And then we have on the second column the frequency of each class interval. We have 6, 3, 9, 7, and 5. We have the x sub m or the midpoint. How do we solve for the midpoint? Just simply add 30 and 34 and then divide it by 2. And then we have the midpoint of 30. Next, 25 plus 29 divided by 2 is 27 and so on. On the fourth column, we have the f x sub m or f times x sub m. This means that we have to multiply the frequency and the midpoint. And on the class interval of 30 to 34, we have the frequency of 6 and the midpoint of 32. So we have 6 times 32 equals 192. Next, the frequency of 3 times 27, we have 81. Next is 9 times 22 equals 198. Next, 7 times 17 is equal to 119. And lastly, we have the frequency of 5 times the midpoint 12 is equal to 60. Add all the data in the fourth column. So we have the 650. Next, we have the fifth column. For us to be able to complete the fifth column, we have to solve first for the mean. Just simply divide 650 by n or the total number of frequencies, which is 30. So we have 650 divided by 30. So we get the mean of 21.67. Next, we will subtract the mean from the midpoint in the table. So we have the absolute value of 32 minus 21.67 is 10.33. Next, our midpoint is 27 and our mean is 21.67. So we have the absolute value of 27 minus 21.67 is 5.33. Next, our midpoint is 22. And again, our mean is 21.67. We got 0 0.33. Next, our midpoint is 17. And our mean is 21.67. The absolute value of 17 minus 21.67 is equal to 4.67. Next, we have 12 minus 21.67, 9.67. Lastly, we will just have to multiply the frequency and our answer on the absolute value of x sub m minus x bar. So we have 6 times 10.33 is equal to 61.98. 3 times 5.33 is 15.99. And then 9 times 0 0.33 is 2.97. 7 times 4.67 is 32.69. And 5 times 9.67 is 48.35. And then add all of this data. We have the sum of 
161.98. Since the table is now completed, we can already find the average deviation. To find the average deviation, divide the sum of the six column by n. So we have 161.98 divided by n, which is 30, we got 5.4 average deviation. Awesome! We are now done with the two measures of variability. Let's proceed to the third one, which is the variance. The variance, or S squared, is the expectation of the square deviation of a random variable from its mean. Informally, it measures how far a set of number is spread out from their average value. How do we solve for the variance of ungrouped data? Variance of a data is defined as the quotient of the sum of the squared deviation from the mean and n. To compute for the variance, we will use this formula. S squared is equal to the summation of the quantity of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1, where x is in the individual score, x bar is the mean of the data, and n is the total number of observations. For example, the table shows the daily sales in peso of little store near a school. Compute the variance. So little store has this data of 300, 310, 290, 295, and 305. Step 1. We will find for the mean or the x bar. So we have 1,500 over 5. So the mean is 300. Step 2. Complete the table below. The table consists of the first column, which is the sales of Lita store, and the next column, the difference between the sale and the mean. So 300 minus 300 is 0. 310 minus 300 is 10, and so on. And the third column is the square of the data in the second column. We have 0, so we will just square it. So 0 squared is equal to 0. We have 10, and then we have to square it, 10 squared, so we have 100 and so on. And then add all the data in the third column, so we have 250. Now let's proceed. Compute the variance. Remember, our summation a while ago in the third column is 250, and our n is 5. We have 250 over n minus 1 or 5 minus 1, which is 4. So 250 divided by 4 is 62.5. Our variance is 62.5. How about in a grouped data? To compute for the variance of a group data, we use the formula where x sub n is the midpoint of each class interval, x bar is the mean of the data, and n is the total number of observations. Let's have an example. Solve for the variance of the following data. So we have here the given table. We have the first column, the class interval. Then we have the frequency and the n, which is the total number of frequencies. Then we have the third column, the midpoint, or the x sub m. Then we have the fourth column, the f times x sub m, or the frequency, multiplied to the midpoint. So we have 192, 81, 198, 119, and 60. Add all the data on the, on the fourth column, so we have 650. Next, on the fifth column is the x sub m, or the midpoint, minus the mean, or the x bar. So we have to solve for the mean first. We'll use the sum of the fourth column and n, which is 30. So we have 650 
divided by 30 is 21.67. So we can now solve for the fifth column. The midpoint is 32 and the mean is 21.67. So we have 32 minus 21.67 is equal to 10.33. Same goes to the next class interval, which has the midpoint of 27 minus the mean 21.67. So that would be 5.33. Then 22 minus 21.67 is 0 0.33. Next, 17 minus 21.67, that would be negative 4.67. Next, 12 minus 21.67 is negative 9.67. The next column, we will just simply square our answer from the previous column. So we have 10.33 squared, that's 106.71. And then 5.33 squared, that's 28.41. And then 0 0.33 squared, 0 0.11, next is 21.81, and lastly, that's 93.51. We will add all the data in the sixth column, so we'll have 161.98. To answer the last column, we'll just simply multiply the frequency to our answer on the sixth column. You have 6 times 106.71. That is 640.25, then 85.23, 0 0.98, 152.66, and lastly, 467.54. And then add, add all of this, we got 1,346.67. Perfect! We have now completed the table. Now we can solve for the variance. To find the variance, just simply divide 1346.67 by n minus 1, or 30 minus 1, which is 29. So the variance is 46.44. Great! We are now on the last measure of variability. It's the standard deviation. What is a standard deviation? It is the most important measure of dispersion. It is a measure of the amount of variation or dispersion of a set of values, which also allow us to immediately compare the spread of different sets of scores. The smaller the standard deviation is, the less varied. How do we solve for the standard deviation of ungrouped and grouped data? For the ungrouped data, we will use the formula S is equals to the square root of the summation of the quantity x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. What do you observe? Awesome! Remember, the formula for the variance is summation of the quantity x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. Therefore, in the standard deviation, we will just get the square root of our variance. We will just also get the square root of our variance in a grouped data to get the standard deviation. For example, for the ungrouped data, a while ago, we have the table of the daily sales in peso of Liga store near a school, which we get a variance of 62.5. So to get the standard deviation of this, we will just simply get the square root of 62.5. And the square root of 62.5 is 7.91. And that is the standard deviation. Next, for the grouped data, a while ago, we also have this table and solve for the variance. We got the variance of 46.44. Now, to get the standard deviation of this, we will just simply get the square root of 46.44. So, the standard deviation is 6.81.
Okay, since you now know the four measures of variability, how about let's have some practice? Let's try this. In your self-learning module, page 12 of quarter 4, you answer let us practice. Did you find the activity easy or difficult? That's fine. That takes a lot of practice. You can practice more using your module. Remember that we have four measures of variability. We have the range, the average deviation, the variance, and lastly, the standard deviation. That's it for today. Just remember, spread love everywhere you go. First of all, in your house, give love to your children, to your wife, or husband, to a next door neighbor. Let no one ever come to you without living better and happier. That is from Mother Teresa. Huwag matakot, bihay makinig, and matalino. Bye-bye!